Once I got my first developer role and started making some income from it, I realized something weird about the job market. There were these other developers around me in the company who seemed to see things that I couldn't, like they had this X-ray vision into systems that they were working with or into career moves and everything. And I always kept wondering what the hell do these guys know that I don't, more importantly, what I don't know that I don't know, because these are the real blind spots that I have. And I started researching their mindset when talking to them and studying how they operated. What I came to realize is that there are generally five traits that separate average developers from the ones who are making 200, 300k or more annually. And with each realization, you're kind of moving up in this developer matrix from being not aware at all to becoming super aware, where you're now one of these guys landing multi six figure deals and escaping the rat race against AI advancements and against cheap overseas developers. It took me five years to figure this out, but now I'll tell you everything in just one video. The first realization that I came to is that the company I work for is not my family and the co-workers are not my friends. Everything in the company is just politics and you're right in the middle of that. And the harsh truth is that your manager might be secretly looking for a way for a justification to fire you. Just because you have the job today doesn't mean that you will have it tomorrow. And this is a hard pill to swallow. Tomorrow you might want to log in and join to the stand up on Microsoft Teams or Zoom and your account might be deactivated. That happened to me for example in the first role where the contract was near to the end. I had still one month to work for the company but then one day I tried to log in to the VPN and to the system and and just realized that nothing was working. They already deactivated even before the contract ended. Of course, in this case, they had to like revert everything and give me access to finalize the work. But still, one day you might just try to log in and see that the system doesn't work and you are already like not in the company without even knowing about it. And this is why you need to be proactive instead of just waiting for that day to come. Here is what you can do for example right now. You can open up a Google Doc and write down every single thing you know you should know but you don't know yet. This is your first layer of the things you need to fix. This is the main reason why you feel imposter because you know that there are things that you should know. You're working on the project but you don't know these things. You don't fully understand it. That's why you have the imposter because there are things that you should definitely know and you are not aware of them yet. So you can spend two weeks researching every topic on that list and trying to understand it. If you just do this, you'll already twice as good as a developer as you are right now. But you can also go a level deeper than that. You need to find out what you don't know that you don't know. This is of course harder part because you don't know what you don't know. So you need to spend some time to understand what are the blind spots for you. This is actually what will get you to six figure roles and better product companies than the ones you're working with right now. The second realization was that being a great coder weights just 10% when it comes to landing high paying jobs. The other 90% is knowing how to interview and position yourself in the company or in the interviews. If you just think about it, the most expensive products aren't expensive because they are the best. They are expensive because everyone knows about them. For example, Apple charges 1200 for an iPhone and Google Pixel charges, let's say 600 for a phone with better specs on paper, maybe even with better cameras, same storage, sometimes even better battery life. But even with that, Apple sells 10 times more at the double price. And why is that the case? That's because of the marketing about the brand and positioning yourself as the A tier instead of being the average on the market. And the same thing applies to you as a developer as well. Most developers think if they just get better at coding, they will be recognized automatically, which is not the case at all. I had a client, for example, in my mentorship program who could explain every technical detail of his project from the tech stack to the architecture to the CICD pipelines. He set it up everything by himself. But when I asked him what business value did this software provide, he had no idea why clients actually paid for the software he built. He had to think about it and still 
couldn't figure out during this call, which could be the interview that you have with the other company. So that's another huge gap. Like you need to understand not just how to build things, but why it matters to the business from their point of view. The third realization I came to is about productive procrastination. For example, early in my career, I was buying 50 hour Udemy courses and joining boot camps that were taught by unemployed developers. What I realized is that this is just a productive form of procrastination. You're completing the course and after completing it, I can barely recall the 10% of the information I learned. And after a year, that shrinks to even, let's say, 1% of information retained from the resource. I don't remember like anything from the first tutorials that I took because that was just a procrastination watching some video tutorials without doing anything and I didn't retain any of the information that I learned from these tutorials. So if courses and books are not how I learn then how do I get better nowadays? This is also something you ask me all the time in the comments like which are the resources that I do use to learn these skills. And that brings me to the fourth realization about the resources. What I came to realize is that the best way to actually learn something is to learn the bare minimum to get started, like spend 10 hours learning about event-driven architecture and then start building one system by designing it from the high level, then choosing the technologies, then building the implementation. For example, I had this role before where I was the lead engineer of the team and we had some front and back end engineers and one full stack guy who was the one that replaced me when I was off or went to vacations, let's say. The project was in AWS cloud and this was my first ever time working with AWS. I needed to quickly learn how the services work, which ones I need to build the system that was required and for the new product that would be deployed on AWS infrastructure. What I did is just learn the bare minimum of each part and then implemented them and then built the project, shipped it, it went live and everyone in the team thought that I'm some genius who knew AWS like years ago. The full stack guy that was always in calls with me took some two huge books like this size of about AWS and he read the first one, he was going through the second second one and in one of the team meetings he said I'm reading this much I have read already this about AWS probably not as much as Hike did but I'm getting better over time and I didn't tell this to him to not ruin his imagination but I have never read a book about any software engineering concept I think that's just too slow and inefficient the reality is you just need to start doing building things and then learn it in the process not by reading like thousands of pages about AWS AWS infrastructure when it updates every month like next month the interface will look way different than it was a month before and the book that you read five years ago is not relevant to today at all so that's how you actually get better faster not by just taking random courses collecting random certificates but by building real things and the fifth realization that I came to is that the best developers always have someone like a mentor someone they can rely on for help and get insights from but then there comes the point that if you want to get to the next level you also need to become the mentor so the problem with this is that the mentors in your company is first of all they will not always be available they will have their job to do for the day let's say it's the senior developer in your company and if you remember the realization number one your company is not your family and co-workers are not your friends if you end up abusing this help you will put yourself in a situation where you might get fired because you need too much help to complete your daily job. That's why having a dedicated mentor outside of your company can really 10x your career. These are the five realizations that I came to that I think separate the mid-tier developers from senior developers. If you have any more tips, feel free to give them in the comments. I will be interested to know. And if you like this video, I recommend you check out this one next where you can learn how I'm landing multi six-figure roles and how you can do it as well.